What's going on YouTube? My name is Simon Sniped and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to review the unit Rosaria which is available on the global servers right now. Hopefully with this you'll have an idea on how you'd like to use her and maybe decide if you'd want to invest your resources into her immediately or put her off for a later day. This is going to be, or at least hoping it will be, a long ongoing series where we review every single unit in the game. I plan to talk about the nature of the unit, its characteristics, and how to practically use them in PvE and PvP. If you have any suggestions on how I can improve this series, do leave them in the comment section below, and all forms of constructive criticisms are always welcome. Now without further ado, let's get into it! Rosaria is the waifu you just enjoy getting stepped on looking at the shoeless feet in <coughs> Putting aside my personal preference, Rosaria has one of the most egoistic and dominating persona that's extremely lovable to a lot of people. Now, she sits on her high throne on an eternally floating chair, commanding her slaves, I mean employees, to do, to do her bidding. Now, her favorite pastime is enjoying mankind's self-destructive and irrational behavior and don't forget soap operas, especially those with immoral and controversial stories. In the game of Countersight, Rosaria is a Ranger class counter unit with a 4 deployment resource cost. She is also a flying unit that floats above the ground, out of reach from all other enemies that cannot target air units, making her indestructible should the opponent comes unprepared. Now her stats are designed in a way to dish out a large amount of burst and sustainable DPS at the cost of having the durability of a single piece of paper. She has one of the highest amount of base attack and because rangers have generally decent amount of crit chance, you can easily build her to have more than 50% or uh, theoretically more crit chance, making her land at least one critical hit every two hits. So let's have a look at what skills Rosaria have. Rosaria's basic attack fires a ball of flame which inflicts damage on a single target on the ground or distant area enemies. If an enemy is a flying unit gets too close, she'll automatically kick them away and continue her attacks. For her passive skill known as the Owner of the Throne, like the queen she portrays herself to be, Rosaria gains an increase of 1.5% attack per enemy up to a maximum of 15% permanently for the entire battle if the skill level is maxed. The stacks will remain even if you redeploy her. For her special skill Destructive Light, Rosaria fires a volley of lasers, damaging three enemies it hits and causing hit stun effects on the enemy for a brief moment. At the maximum level, this skill also refreshes every single time she is deployed, allowing her to cast it instantly every time she enters the field. Moving on to her ultimate skill, Punishing Edge, Rosaria rises from her seat of power and swings a gigantic blade, inflicting AoE damage to the closest three enemy units, knocking them up in the process as well. Once you max this skill, you also give it the ability to reduce its cooldown by 15 seconds every single time you redeploy Rosaria into the fight. Judging by Rosaria's overall character design, apart from the law, is a hard-hitting DPS unit that is there to dish out high amount and sustainable DPS in any setting. Her incredibly low defense in comparison with any other rangers in fact suggests that she is meant to be easy to kill, creating an equal handicap as a form of hero balance. Her optimum playstyle revolves around quickly dispatching key units and maintaining high DPS output throughout the entire fight. She has three key features which suggest that you'd want to consistently redeploy her onto the battlefield multiple times in a single fight even if she is alive and healthy. Number one, her special skill can be casted upon deployment every single time. Number two, her ultimate skill is reduced by 15 seconds upon every redeployment. And number three, her stacked attack buff does remain on her even upon redeployment. So how well you can maximize Rosaria's DPS output depends on how you manage your resources to keep yourself alive while finding the opportunity to redeploy her again and again and again. Knowing that Rosaria is there to just dish out raw damage, you want to gear her in a way that capitalizes on her high base attack and crit chance. The following list of substats are all optimal choices for her depending on who you are up against. As for the set bonuses, the following are all also great on her depending on who you're up against as well. 
Just a quick reminder that the previously mentioned stat and set bonuses are actually not ranked in sequence. So it does not mean that skill haze is ranked better than anti-ground damage and it's better than anti-air damage and it's better than anti-roll damage because depending on the situation sometimes having skill haste is more essential than having more anti-ground damage and sudden fights where the end most of the enemies are air units having anti-ground damage might actually be a dead stat now that we understand what rosario actually does here is my quick pve and pvp verdict for this hero in early to most of the late game content, Rosara is an incredibly effective DPS unit to have. Although she needs 4 deployment resources to deploy, she easily outperforms any 3 cost DPS units in the game, aside from a handful of others that is actually available for us right now. In campaign mode, she'll have no trouble staying alive with a healthy frontline. In late game modes such as Danger Close, which will come to the global servers later on, she may not see much screen time due to her averagely higher deployment costs. That's because in Danger Close, every unit cost, deployment cost recharge rate, skill timing, etc. is paramount in pushing for higher scores. Unless she gains a clear advantage from these season's buffs, you usually do not use her in most of these Danger Close seasons. In raids and guild call op battles, however, she is a pretty staple unit to have in order to deal a lot of damage, since there is a much bigger roster of units to deploy in these modes. The capacity for players to also stack all sorts of positive buffs due to the size of the entire team also exponentially boosts Rosaria's DPS capabilities. Moving on to PvP, on weeks where she does not have a clear disadvantage, Rosaria is an amazing unit used in rush teams, siege teams, and sometimes stall teams as well, that needs an oh shit button during the battle. The fact that she's able to cast a special skill upon deployment gives her the same advantage as any other units with an ETB effect. ETB effects are also known as enter the battle effects. An enter the battle effect is when a character is able to create a direct change to the battlefield upon entering the battle. An example would be like Elizabeth who does damage at the location of deployment before jumping back to safety. Other than that, she doesn't really serve any other intricate functions. As a general unit score, I'd give it an 8 out of 10 on whether or not if you should pull for her when her banner is around. Now her raw damage output is, to this day, still one of the top few in the game even when competed against Awakened units. And because she is a DPS unit, she benefits the most from being pushed to level 110 as well. And that's it for this unit review. Once again, if you like what you see, do leave a like, comment what you'd like to see added into these reviews in the future and I'll see how I can fit them in. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and until the next one, I'll see you again soon. Bye!